check this out. All right, so in the last video, we showed you guys a setup of our Erdolite plastic part. Well, today, we're gonna show you more of the machining of this Erdolite plastic part. Now, like I say, the bar feeder is one thing, machining is another. You have to make sure that you employ the right machining methods, the right process, make sure you control the chips so you can really walk away and come back to accurately produce parts. So make sure you guys stick around to the end of today's video, because if you remember these calipers right here, we had our giveaway in the first part. And at the end, we're gonna let you know who the winner was. So the first thing I do is I come in with my inserted drill and I gut the inside of that part, removing as much material as fast as possible. So now we're gonna come in with our turning tools. And the one thing that you really wanna understand with your turning tools when it comes to plastic is they need to be sharp. Now, since I went ahead and drilled the part first, I don't have to face all the way across the part, which does save me time to run as many parts as possible. Also, when we rough, we break a real nice chip. But when we finish, as you can see, that chip kind of builds up. We have to feed slow because we need that surface finish. So what I did, I went ahead and I programmed a deburr pass with that same tool to drag those chips to the front of the part and make sure that they're gone before my drill comes in for the outside holes. Next, we're gonna come in with a drill from Kenna Metal. This is an HPS drill, really designed for non-ferrous materials. But the key point of this operation is our high pressure coolant. We wanna keep chips off that drill. If chips build up, it's gonna blow up that hole size and could scrap a lot of parts. All right, so our part does have a 45 degree chamfer on the inside and at the back. So in order to hit all our features in OP1, we went ahead and used a VBGT insert on our boring bar, which allows us to complete the whole part. Now, one of the most time-consuming features of this part can actually be deburring the outside and the inside of the 13 holes that go around the outside diameter. So in order to make sure we do that in the machine, we actually went ahead and used this tool right here. So the way this tool works is this blade is under tension that's set with a set screw in the back of the tool. And as you feed into the part, it chamfers the outside, the tension pushes the blade down. When it pokes through the wall, the blade pops back out, and then you feed the tool back out, and in the same way, it chamfers that inside surface. Now, just like our drill, we're using high pressure coolant to keep the chips off of that tool. If you don't provide coolant, sometimes they'll build up around that tool and that can cause complications with your manufacturing process. Finally, we have completed all of our machining operations except for the part off. Now, if you notice, when I do this, I don't actually run the coolant because the coolant will have a tendency to shoot that part out of the parts catcher. So this operation is ran dry. All right, so that wraps up our video on how we work to achieve lights out machining. Now I will point out that depending on your machine and your tools, your coolant delivery system and whatnot, you might have to modify this a little bit. And you'll definitely wanna watch it for more than a few parts to make sure that you have your system locked down. And before we get out of here, we wanna make sure that we go ahead and give away our pair of Mitsutoyo calipers. We look down in the comments below and Raymond, it appears you're the winner. You're an up and coming machinist from what I hear, and you can go ahead and thank Dave D for putting you in the contest. So before you guys go, please hit that like button and make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can be eligible for future giveaways. We'll see you guys soon.